looks like we're Howard and Paul are going to join us. Wonderful. Well, we know what we are at the end of what I've heard is a wonderful virtual Keith A. Francis weekend. Um, again, my name's Stephen Koo, and I know we're kind of doing this at opposite ends. I know yesterday we we had an opening that may have been super early for anyone on the West Coast, um, but now we're having a closing, which hopefully everyone can make. But um, I know the four of us just going to share maybe a few thoughts on, on some things moving forward. Uh, you have in front of you, if you're watching, I don't know, I'd say a lot of admission experience here. And, and I just want to say first for all of us, thanks so much for taking the time to, to join us. Uh, we know that this has been, I don't know, 14 months now, 13 months now of a lot of virtual things and, and inability to kind of get to campus. And so we just really appreciate that you took the time as admitted students to, to learn more about you know, Boston College, but also really just take advantage of this weekend that, like I said yesterday during the opening, this is my favorite event that happens as part of what we do in admissions. So um, I know my colleagues have a lot of different things to say as well. And, and we'll certainly get to maybe some of the nuts and bolts to, to talk about maybe steps as Aiden mentioned moving forward as we get to May 1st and, and kind of some things to think about as we get to that point. Any of my colleagues can chime in if they would like. Well, I guess I, I just would like to, to add uh, to, uh, to what my colleague, Mr. Koo said. Uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in and you know being part of, of what we feel is um, a great you know, family and community, which we, we started with talking about you know, coming to the BC community, what it would mean not only for you, but only for, also for us. Um, how much you, you, you'd be welcomed into the community. And I hope that you felt the passion from the students. But I also wanted to publicly thank um, all the students um, who served on this year's committee. I know you guys are on the call right now. We really do appreciate all your efforts to put together what was a wonderful program. Um, I understand it was virtual this year, but um, the same type of passion and, and effort was was put into the planning, the planning of it, the you know, the process of it and now the ending of it. So we're hoping that you're walking away with not only experience of knowing about Boston College, but knowing about what it is to be, you know, a college student from interacting with all these wonderful students on the screen and part of the program all day yesterday and today. I guess while we're giving out thank yous, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, all of you again for attending, but also, and our student, our BC students for the great work that they've done, but also my uh, outstanding colleagues and all the work that they've done, particularly uh, my colleague, Stephen Koo for, our, for really kind of working closely with Aiden to put this whole event together. Um, you know, as, as Stephen said, I mean, this is something we all look forward to every year. And uh, I feel so fortunate that we were able to transition to a virtual uh, program. I think, um, I hope that it helped all of you to learn a little bit more about Boston College and learn more about the community and the culture here. Certainly, um, if there are any lingering questions, you know, get in touch with students, get in touch with us, um, you know, anything you need to help you finalize and figure out if this is truly the right fit for you, um, we're certainly at your disposable, disposal. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And thank you again for, for participating. Well, when you go last in something like this, you learn to be the master of redundancy. So I don't think I have any original thoughts that haven't already been expressed, but um, yeah, Stephen Koo has worked tirelessly to orchestrate this. Uh, not that you know everyone else in the committee hasn't done their share of work, you know, I've done less than everyone else. So I, I feel confident saying this. Um, but uh, yeah, th this could not have been pulled off without um, without all the work that uh, Steve and, and my colleagues have done. Um, I've only I've only worked in one institution for nearly 40 years. So I can't compare us to all the others. But I can't imagine that you will have had a similar experience or an experience that exceeds the welcoming that you would have 
had this weekend from current Boston College students. I think they very much uh, epitomize what we think makes Boston College unique. It's a reason why so many people who are employed at Boston College don't leave. Um, or if, if they leave, they come back because they've learned. Um, you, I just think it's an amazing place to spend minimally four years of your life. And one of the other great things about this kind of a program is it's, it's done its purpose if potentially you decide that we're too big, we're too far away from home, we're, you know, we're, whatever it is we're two of, you know, part of what we do is try to be sure that you have all the information that you need to make the best decision for you, not for your, not for your parents, you know, not for your friends, and not for us, the admission people, you know, we, we would love to have all of you come to Boston College. We're not, we know we're not the perfect place for everybody. Uh, and we know there are other fine places and we know we're competing for your affections for that. We just hope that we have given you a wide open door to make the best possible decision. And uh, wherever you decide that you're gonna go, and we hope it will be Boston College, um, we just hope that it's gonna be the right fit for you and you're gonna get everything that you're looking for. So thank you all for attending. And to piggyback off of something that Howard said, uh, well, first, Howard, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, this is a, a team effort, so happy to be part of the team. Um, but you mentioned kind of the fit and kind of what are people thinking about? And certainly one of the pieces that comes up, I would say it's come up for the past 11 plus days and will come up for the next 19 days, 19, 20 days is financial aid. And I don't know if anyone on the, on, in the audience has you know, questions about financial aid, but that is something that we in our office, the 19 counselors that are in the admission office, we're gonna try and contact as many people as possible to figure out, is there something with financial aid that is happening or isn't happening? Um, part of our job, we don't do the reads, I guess, uh, when you, when you uh, submit all the information, but we definitely try and help you Kind of work through the situation. Maybe it's a contact person in the financial aid office. Maybe it's paperwork that is or is not in. So there are lots of different ways where I hope we can be a resource to you, not just financial aid, but in any questions that you may have. But certainly financial aid is something where if you were a billionaire, we would say give us a lot of money to come to Boston College. But I don't know any billionaires. And as we go through this process with so many students is trying to figure out, okay, does it make sense to come to Boston College? If, if BC is the perfect fit for you, but then we get to the financial piece and, and maybe it's not the perfect place anymore, we try and work with you to figure out how can we make it happen? And if we can't, then we know, just like Howard said, there may be a better place for you. But our goal, honestly, in admitting someone is having to come to Boston College and we will, we will work with you to try and figure out how does the financial piece kind of work out. Um, I, I know that uh, Danielle, Howard, and Paul all have lots of experience working with students, uh, myself included. Um, you know, we just try and work with you uh, with questions that may come up. If, if you want us to speak with your parents, happy to do that as well. If you want to, if you just want to know who is my financial aid person, we can do that too. But uh, I know that there are so many considerations that go into this process. Um, higher education is, is that one thing that never goes down in terms of cost. Um, but in terms of, as you think about how much Boston College costs, and then you get to the meeting, you know, full demonstrated need for so many students at Boston College, they do not pay what, I guess, I don't know, it's weird to say sticker price, but they don't pay what the stated cost is to come to Boston College. So you know, meeting your need, that's, that's part of this process in terms of uh, making it financially viable for you to come to Boston College. Yeah, could, can I add uh, something about oh, this? <laughs> to, well, one main thought is, if any of you out there do not have a financial aid award already, it almost always means you're missing something and be proactive, you know, reach out to any of us or whoever signed your acceptance letter 
And that's part of what we're doing now that, that Stephen was mentioning. But, uh, you know, I, I've spoken to quite a lot of students, as I'm sure my colleagues have, who are admitted. And I've, a number of them saying, well, Mr. Singer, no, I still don't have my financial aid award. They didn't check to see that maybe their FAFSA wasn't filed or the taxes aren't there. But there's always a reason if, if, if you're two weeks into learning that you were admitted. So reach out on that behalf. And one, one other final thought for me is that uh, you know, the, the cost of higher education doesn't go down, but the value of the education you get never goes down. It only becomes enhanced. So that's another way to, to think about costs. Thanks. I don't want to be the hog here, but I'll just bring up a couple of other things then. Um, you know, Aiden kind of mentioned moving forward, timeline, things like that. Uh, our office, you know, virtual Keithe Francis Ahana weekend, I know it was a huge kind of time commitment with Aiden and, and his entire committee, which I know you will see all of them again in a, in a few moments. But um, I would also say that the experience Boston College programming that's happening the rest of this month. Uh, we mailed out uh, many, many postcards to people. So hopefully you have a postcard that says Experience Boston College and a little calendar, but also on your applicant status portal, you can take a look and see what else is happening in terms of programming. Um, Howard kind of mentioned the person who signed your letter. If you go onto your applicant status portal, you'll actually see our faces, uh, the person who signed your letter and you can contact them. Uh, we are always open to you touching base with us. We're gonna try to touch base with as many admitted students as possible, but if you reach out to us, we will definitely get back to you as well. So that's just kind of one plug for programming that is uh, happening moving forward as we get closer to May 1st. And then I mentioned May 1st. So May 1st, uh, if you are not sure of, oh, when do I need to actually deposit at a school or confirm enrollment at a school? For many, many, many colleges and universities across the country, May 1st is that date. So BC is among the schools that has May 1st as a date. So that is what we call our enrollment confirmation date. Okay, so that's just kind of one thing to kind of keep in mind as you get closer to May 1st, people may start asking you, where are you going to go to college? They may be asking you that right now. But certainly as you get closer to May 1st, uh, probably more people will be asking you. And, and certainly if you have a guidance counselor, or college counselor at your high school, I hope they're asking you that question as well, just to kind of make sure that you're on top of things. And, and that's our goal as well. Um, Howard mentioned fit. Yeah, this is definitely part of the fit. You're gonna figure out what is the best place for you when you consider everything. And our hope certainly is that it's Boston College, but yeah, as Howard mentioned, we end up with 23 to 2,400 undergrads as a freshman at BC. There are many more uh, that could come to BC, but they choose, hey, this is the best spot for them, Boston College or someplace else. But I think if you go in to this process with all the information possible in front of you, you will make the very best decision for yourself and your family. All right, well, at this point then, I guess uh, the parting words from us would just be, again, congratulations. Thank you so much for spending time with us, with this wonderful committee, uh, with Boston College this weekend. And, and hopefully the next couple of weeks, you'll have a lot more opportunities to engage in some of the programming that BC is offering. But again, thank you so much. And we wish you all the best um, as you kind of figure out your future college home for the next four years. And with that, we'll turn it back over to Aiden. Great, uh, thanks everybody. So I'm not gonna hold you for too long. Uh, I'm just gonna invite the rest of my committee to join me up here. Uh, basically, we're just gonna close everything out by briefly um, saying whatever, every, whatever everybody wants to say, but most importantly, we're all just gonna go by, remind everybody who we are. If you may have forgotten, I know you've seen a lot of faces and put our, our, our contact information in the chat box so you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, yeah, so that's, I guess, the closing. We're, we've come to a close after uh, we kind of spread all of our information. Um, in terms of the admitted student events, one final plug is for all of the Ohana Plus experience, uh, 
panels, which are Thursday nights at 7 p.m. I'm going to be moderating all of them. So if you want to stop by, say hey, um, that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, I am going to turn it over uh, to the committee for introductions. We're going to start with Kaylee, um, and we can work our way down the line from there. Hi, everyone. Once again, I'm Kaylee. Thank you all for being here. Um, I hope that you guys had a good time and that you guys were able to learn a bit more about BC um, and a bit more about us. So as a refresher, my name is Kaylee. I'm a freshman here at BC from Bronx, New York. Um, my majors are, I'm an African and African diaspora studies major and an international studies minor. Um, and so I'm on the AHANA outreach committee. And then outside of that, I also do a Black Student Forum. So I will put my email in the chat. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about being a freshman, about being on MLE, about being an AHANA student, and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. So thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, just a reminder, my name is Winnie. I'm a senior um, studying biology with minors in medical humanities and faith, peace, and justice, originally from Connecticut. Um, but yeah, it was really great to, to have some conversations with you guys this weekend. I hope you learned um, more about like what are your future steps um, in terms of like deciding what colleges. I'm also going to put my um, my email in the chat if you want to just ask me anything um, about what you've heard about the past two days. Um, hi guys, thank you so much for coming and also thank you to the committee and everyone in admissions who made it possible. Um, I am a senior, my name is Emily, I'm a senior in the Carroll School of Management. Uh, I'm studying finance with a double major in film studies in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, I am involved in this as well as uh, Pulse Council. I'm a Pulse Council member. I've also held positions in OLA, the Organization of Latin American Affairs, and UGBC. Um, so if anyone has any questions in those, uh, I'd be more than happy to answer them. My email is in my little box, and also I'm sending it in the chat now. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out if you ever need to. Hi everyone, um, nice to, not that I see you guys, but I know you're there, nice to see you again. Um, just to reiterate, my name is Gianna, uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, double majoring in political science and history. Um, and outside of the AHANA Plus Outreach Committee, I am involved in the undergraduate government of Boston College. Um, I am currently a student assembly representative for my class and I'm the incoming executive vice president for the next year. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me about absolutely anything about my experiences or um, just if you're curious about more, um, more about what BC has to offer. Definitely here for you. I'm gonna send my email in the chat and um, I really hope that you've taken away great things from this weekend and that we can continue being of service to you and being that point of contact um, you know, throughout your college process. And you know, if you decide to come to BC throughout your journey at BC. Great. Yeah, and just, I guess, in closing, in terms of being in more contact as well, something that hasn't been mentioned is we also, through the student admissions program for the rest of April, are going to be hosting just regular admitted or regular uh, tours and panels on, or the tours are going to be virtuals every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, you can find a Zoom link there on the admission website, and there's going to be um, in-person tours outside, obviously, for those in the Boston area, they're limited to 10 people, um, and you can read more about registering for all of that on the Boston College of Admissions website as well. Um, so before I recap myself, I'm just going to speak on behalf of three of the committee members who aren't able to be attending the closing today. Um, so oh, we have a question in the Q&A. Um, interested to know if you have any chance. Cool. So we have one question that we're going to address before we all roll out of here, um, but really quickly. So we have um, Sabrina, who is a nursing student from Boston. She is class of 2023. She is the RA. Um, resident assistant in the learning and living community that is dedicated to nursing students of color. Um, she's on this committee as well. So you, I'm going to send all of their emails at once. Um, there's Daniela, who's the class of 2023. She's from Miami. Um, she is involved in OLA. I am blanking on what she's studying in MCAS, but um, if somebody else wants to correct me, feel free to jump in. Um, and then there is Zara, who is studying transformative education in the Lynch School. She is from Long Island. She's a freshman. Um, she's also a 
in Jenks leadership program and um, involved in the Muslim Student Association. So I will send all of these in the chat. Um, also to recap, uh, my name is Aiden. As you know, I am a senior studying environmental sociology with a concentration in environmental justice. Um, I'm also going to law school, so pre-law, but like technically almost law now um, next year. So if anybody wants to talk about that program as well, I'd be more than happy to discuss. Um, so yeah, before we break, we have one quick question. So somebody is interested to know, have any of you all, or have any or, or all of you had a chance to study with faculty of color across any courses? And also how diverse is the Boston College faculty? So whoever uh, would like to start and feel free to hop on this question. Um, I'll take a back seat and hop on and add any thoughts at the end. Um, I can answer this question. Uh, I have studied with um, faculty of color. I would say um, because I am an African African diaspora studies major, my pool of faculty might be a, a bit more diversified than the average student here at BC. So most of my professors are black and are, of, um, are professors of color. So I've had that experience so far. Um, this has been my first year at BC, so I haven't had too many professors yet. Um, but on my end, I would say, yes, my professors have been diverse. Um, just a quick addition to that. Um, even though I feel like most of my professors have been white, there have been a handful that have been um, people of color. Um, I take a lot of my classes in the science department. So um, my lab research, um, the lab that I worked for, um, um, he was a person of color as well as my stats professor and also my class on bioethics. So although most of my professors are white, there are a handful and I think BC is trying to hire more um, professors of color. Yeah, and I, or Emily, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say going off that. Um, yeah, I think definitely not um, a majority of my professors have been professors of color. I think they've definitely been white. Um, in the majority, but I have had a chance across a lot of different fields to study with professors of color. So in everything from some of my CSOM core classes, like my modeling for business analytics class, which I believe has a different name now, um, but is still part of the core. Um, I've also had professors of color in the communications department, in the film department, and across a variety of different electives as well. So um, I've had the opportunity, but I wouldn't say it was the majority of my experience. Great. Yeah. And I guess just to like sum this all up, one of the beauty, one of the beauties of being a college student is like you can pick all of your courses and you can pick your professors. So like if I'm being 100% honest, um, being a professor of color hasn't really, in my mind, at least been a requisite for a lot of the classes that I'm taking. I mean, sure, it's definitely a plus once I get there, but it has never really been in my um, experience, the deciding factor is like, OK, I'm not going to take this class. But if that's something that's very important to you, you can definitely make that work. Um, there are, I think there's going to be professors of color represented in most departments. And um, even if that's not possible, it's 100% possible to get a, um, an advisor of color, especially coming into Zahana through the Bowman Ahana Intercultural Center. So that is, um, that's possible as well. So yeah, I mean, seeing as there's no more questions in the Q&A, um, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Very casual. Thank you all for your time and coming, especially during this crazy year. And um, once again, Congratulations on your acceptance to Boston College's class of 2025. If we can be of any further service, feel free to reach out, um, give the admissions office a call, give the student admissions program a call. Um, yeah, we'll all be here. So congratulations again. And I guess that's all she wrote.